This is an overview of the studio that offers the metadata for uh, various databases. What I'll do is uh, just take you through the different um, components that make up the studio. So I'll open up a, a project that I've prepared earlier, which is over AdventureWorks. The first screen that will come up are the general attributes for the project. So I'll just click on Add attributes and you can see here we've got a unique identifier for the project and a unique code for the project. Now this code is what is stamped on all the queries that are uh, created for reports afterwards. You've got a description and of course the project can be password locked. Below this attribute section we've got branding so we can uh, change the icons that are associated with the project and also um, put in splash screens and uh, URLs to your website. Under there we've got a section for events. So uh, metadata is not simply um, static SQL snippets but also uh, events such as uh, on start up with the project or when the user logs on grabbing security information etc. And of course our versioning information. Under there we've got uh, the connections that are associated with the project. You can create your own connections or reuse some of the existing templates. Uh, you can see that I've enabled uh, Microsoft SQL Server and I've defined properties for that connection. Then we've got uh, the concepts of super fields. Uh, where before starting a query on a table you can prompt for something like a, a company or or some sort of high level filter that would determine which tables are shown. And then we've got properties, uh, global properties and user level properties that can be defined for the product. Just click on tables and here are the tables that are available with the metadata. Of course you can add and delete tables as you see fit and you can see on the tree here on the left that there are, there is a hierarchical view over the tables called table display where you can organize the tables into folders and under there that you've got uh, all the tables that are available. Now it's possible to have tables that are not visible in the hierarchical tree. Then we've got uh, processes. Now the concept of processes is, uh, is so that you can execute uh, .NET code or SQL at particular points in the query building process. For example on startup would allow you to run SQL statements uh, on the startup of the project and on user logon would allow you to, to collect information from the underlying system related to security, things that you want to uh, put into the, the query so that the user can uh, get the correct information depending on their, on their security profile. It can also be used for things like uh, showing different labels and descriptions to the user depending on their preferential settings. So uh, processes uh, have lots of uses. Then we've got uh, solutions and what solutions allows you to do is is to uh, bundle together applications. Uh, Studio is more than just uh, authoring metadata, it's also an application framework that allows you to deploy .NET code. So Solutions allows you to, to organize your, your applications into a hierarchical tree and then uh, display it to the user. With the include file section uh, what we have here is the ability to import .NET projects and then which are then tied into the processes, uh, include component libraries and of course embed standalone databases. There's also the ability uh, here to include report packs. 
just go back to the tables and there are a, a few other features that need explanation. As you can see here we've got a field in its description and with the descriptions we've got a dictionary so instead of repeating a description five or six times throughout the database you can uh, create a dictionary key and have all the fields point to that one centralized key. So this is the concept of dictionary. Now when you're going through and editing tables and fields sometimes it's a good idea to to create a, a task list so that can be done using the find and replace feature so I'll just do a quick search here on uh, anything that has the word join left out of join and do a find on just SQL statements left outer join and find and here I've got a list of all the SQL statements that are related to joins so I can use the find and the search and replace feature as a, a form of task list and delete the ones I don't wish to deal with and I can then do a find and replace on the remaining items in the task list or I can just double click them and edit them straight from that point. So here I've brought up the uh, define join window. So quite a handy feature. I'll just go to another table where there is a join defined and you can see here we've got a join to the human resources employee table. And if I click on there on the join itself I can see the criteria that makes up the join. Now what I'll do is create a new join just to show you how that starts. So I'll just come right click here and do new join and I want to join from human resource job candidate table to human resource employee table. So I select that and so I want to join from John candidate ID to employee ID and you can see here it's building up the SQL statement and I just hit add and press OK and now I've added a new join to the table. Okay I think that pretty well wraps it up for this brief overview.